All right, everyone, March 4th, 2013, and I will put the link to this article below in the show more box. There's a video included. The Vatican's secret plan for the arrival of an alien god. Here you see a picture. Uh, the evening after Pope Benedict XVI announced uh, to the world his resignation, a lightning bolt hits the cross on the top here of St. Peter's Basilica. Tom Horn, the author of Petrus Romanus, The Final Pope is Here, joins Red Ice Creations for a fascinating discussion about what may very well be prophecy unfolding. They discuss the reform of the Catholic Church and, amazingly, how whoever ends up taking the place of Benedict as Pope may play the surprise role of being instrumental in the disclosure of extraterrestrial life. Now, if you joined us last Saturday, last, uh, Saturday, for our live broadcast over at Tiny Chat, we had uh, J7409, and she is very, very um, knowledgeable in meteorites and comets and the UFO phenomenon, and the Vatican is uh, very interested in these things as well. They have a giant telescope named Lucifer, of all things. Go figure that. Now, they also discuss UFO sightings, Rome, astrology, and who uh, and what extraterrestrials really are. Now, I'm going to play this video in a moment. You will find out they're not little green men from another galaxy. They are demons. They are demonic. They are fallen angels. How much of a role will the Vatican participate in with this forthcoming disclosure? All right, Thomas Horn is an internationally recognized lecturer, radio, radio host, and best-selling author of several books, including his newest books, Petrus Romanus, The Final Pope is Here. Um, and I am going to, right now, I'm going to play this for you. Take a listen, and the link will be below. I'm Henrik. Thank you for tuning in wherever you're listening from. We are available worldwide through our website, redicecreations.com, and we have uh, much more for you right there on all the topics that we find interesting and important, so I hope you check it out. Tom Horn is an internationally recognized lecturer, radio host, and best-selling author of several books, including Petrus Romanus, The Final Pope is Here, and the upcoming Exo Vaticana. He is a well-known columnist who has been interviewed by U.S. congressmen and senators on his findings, as well as featured repeatedly in the major media. Tom received the highest degree honorary doctorate bestowed in 2007 from legendary professor Dr. I.D.E. Thomas for his research into ancient history. And today we're going to discuss the recent news of the abdication of Pope Benedict XVI and the prophecy of the final Pope, Peter the Roman, whose reign would end in the destruction of Rome. The list of the popes from St. Malachi heralds the beginning of great apostasy, followed by great tribulation, setting the stage for the imminent unfolding of apocalyptic events. According to this prophecy, the next pope will be a false prophet who leads the world's religious communities into embracing a political leader known as Antichrist. We will also discuss the reformation of the Catholic Church and how whoever seeks the throne of the papacy might take a more active part in both politics and the disclosure of extraterrestrial life, something Tom writes more about in the upcoming book Exo Vaticana. All right, welcome back so soon, we should say, due to these uh, very interesting developments, of course. Uh, thank you for uh, taking the time talking with us uh, today, Tom. Hey, Henrik, always great to be with you on Red Eyes Radio. Excellent. Uh, I know how many requests you've gotten about this, understandably, so we're, we're very fortunate to have you uh, with us. We really appreciate it. So uh, tell us, first of all, Tom, what, what, is, what has happened and what do you know so far regarding the resignation of the, of the Pope, Tom? Well, of course, I, I think we knew... Uh, at least we speculated a lot uh, last year, 2005, when we released that book, Petrus Romanus, The Final Pope Is Here, because, uh, and by the way, I should say that I don't consider myself to be a prophet. A lot of people now are saying that I am. I don't, I really don't see that at all. Um, all I think I am is an investigator, and maybe I'm pretty good at analytical deductions, because we saw evidence in 2012 that the Pope was about to resign, and that, of course, uh, he is the final, he is the next to the final one on the ancient prophecy of the popes, which is ascribed to St. Malachi, which we can talk about if you like to. And I came on your show 
last year. And we talked about that and how it was our feeling that the Pope was going to resign in 2012. And in fact, I might have said this on your show, we certainly said it in the book, that we speculated he was going to resign in March or April of 2012. Yeah. Now, we were led to believe that that didn't happen. And uh, here just on Monday, uh, this last week, so we're only talking, what, five days ago or something, uh, six days ago, seven days ago, whatever it is. <laughs> I'm sorry, I haven't done so much radio, I don't know what day it is. No, no worries, no. <laughs> but, but basically a week ago, uh, the Pope announced that he was going to abdicate uh, his uh, bishopry over Rome and, and his uh, sitting upon the throne of Peter. And uh, now, why that brought a great deal of attention back upon me was three weeks before the Pope announced that he was going to resign, I was on another radio show with Steve Quayle in which I said that the resignation of Pope Benedict was imminent. Well, then three weeks later he resigned and everybody in the world wanted to know how I knew that. Right. Right? Mm. Um, an interesting thing, though, uh, that we have since learned is that, in fact, the Pope actually stepped down in 2012 exactly when we speculated that he was going to. And this was verified in a February 11 article in the New York Times. And the title of that article, if somebody wants to look it up, is called A Statement Rocks Rome Then Send Shockwaves Around the World. This was right on the heels of the Pope turning in his resignation. And if you read that article, you see where the editor of the Vatican-owned newspaper, the El Observatorio Romano, a man by the name of Giovanni Maria Vian, he confirmed that the Pope had actually handed in his resignation at the, at the exact time that we predicted he would, March 2012, and the New York Times quotes the Vatican spokesman saying, quote, the Pope's decision was taken months ago after his trip to Mexico and Cuba in March 2012, yes. and it has been kept with a reserve that no one could violate. Well, boy, they really kept a lid on that because even most of the cardinals were unaware that he had officially turned in his resignation, and maybe the bigger or deeper mystery is why he turned it in last year uh, and by the way, when somebody says, well, how did you deduce down to March or April of last year? Mm -hmm. That actually had a lot to do with the French Codex by René Thibault that I talked with you about a year ago. People could listen to that archive show uh, in which we went through some of the speculation about René Thibault. And he's the one that actually had brought it right down to March and April. So based on a lot of other deductions and then using the Jesuit codebreaker for Rome, who over 60 years ago, said that the uh, that he didn't name Benedict, but he said that the Pope before Petrus Romanus would resign around March or April of 2012. So he absolutely nailed on the head. Now this raises just a huge amount of questions about the prophecy of the Popes, whether the prophecy of the Popes was supernaturally inspired, either you know divinely or demonically. I'll let other people determine what <laughs> they think about that, right? Yeah. But it was supernaturally inspired. Or maybe the deeper question is, there are those inside the Vatican who hold this prophecy to some esteem, and the College of Cardinals have been using it like a roadmap to, uh, to vote for, to elect popes who somehow can be seen as fulfilling that prophecy. And, and maybe there was some what? Was there some pressure? Was there some opus dei manipulating <laughs> going on behind the scenes in Rome that put pressure on... Uh, uh, Benedict to step down at that exact moment because that's the way the prophecy had speculated it. It just raises a huge number, probably more questions than answers. Yeah, yeah, you're absolutely right. It's very interesting and very strange as well. Now I have, have to ask you, Tom, uh, does all of this then have something to do with the the trip to Mexico in March 2012? There came out some articles that he he fell, he hit his head in some way, and this is like what's what has led to all of this. Do, do you agree with that? Have you read that? Well, he was injured. Now, did he fall? Um, was he attacked? I, you know, just who in the world knows? Uh, but he was injured, uh, according to the official stories. He woke up the next day, had blood on his head. By the way, today's news reporting that he's gone blind in one eye. Really? Um, yeah. And furthermore, uh, we've known for some time that, and this, this played into our speculations about why and when he would retire, uh, that his health. I wasn't doing that well. He, he was getting weaker and weaker. He's being wheeled around on a cart at some of the places where he went to speak. He himself, don't forget, uh, in an interview, 
have been asked whether it would ever be permissible for a pope to step down or should they always die in office. And he had actually argued, and he's, he you know, used to be known as God's Rottweiler. He was a strong theologian uh, for the church, great at arguing. And he had actually said that if, if the pope uh, you know, got to a point where he could no longer uh, carry out his duties as the pope, then it would be permissible under church rules and law for that pope to be able to step down so somebody else could do the job that could actually carry out the functions of the church. So he himself had argued that. that I'm going to skip on ahead just for time's sake, but you uh, will have the, the link with the entire video below. I just uh, limited it on time here. Let's see where we're at here now. Not out of the bag. Uh, our book, Exo Vaticana, is about that very subject, a, a coming papal decree that is going to well, let me just put it this way. It's not only going to say that belief in extraterrestrials is okay for Catholics. What it's really going to say is that denying the reality of extraterrestrials is akin to heresy uh -huh. be because it limits God's creative ability. And what the, what the Jesuits and members of Opus Dei have written in, in the form of official uh, church theology, brand new, doctrinal papers that have been written, which we're publishing, I think is absolutely, Henrik, it's going to shock the world, because they evidently know something that the rest of us don't know that seems to be pointing to a very imminent uh, official disclosure moment that somehow, some way is going to need for the Vatican, the largest Christian organization in the world, to tell everybody that it's okay and these are our space brothers, and not only are they our... That'll be uh, a fake... Uh, alien invasion. Once the rapture of the church takes place, when you get the new pope in, Petrus Romanus, Peter the Roman, uh, he is going to usher in the beast, the Antichrist. The church is going to be removed, and now Rome and, and the Antichrist and Petrus Romanus are going to have to explain where did all these people go. And welcome Lucifer and the fallen angels wanted to run that by you. Space Brothers, they're closer to God than we are, and they've come to show us the way. <laughs> Very interesting. I, I can't help to wonder as well how much of a political move all of this is. I mean, if we for a moment put the supernatural aspects to the side, which we, I mean, the, it, when we zoom out and look at the whole picture, we have to take everything into account, of course. But sure. uh, this is a... Uh, this is at a time now when there's been tremendous scandals around the Vatican and all the stuff with the, uh, with, with the pedophilia and the protection of these priests and all, everything. And, and, and I couldn't help to feel at the beginning, at least, that someone might be forcing you know, Benedict off the, off the stage, if you will, because they want to bring someone else onto the scene that can, uh, well, do a better cleanup job, if you will, Tom, in all of this. Yeah, I think there's something to that. Again, that was all part of what we wrote in Petrus Romanus. Uh, in fact, we've had people this week and last week since the Pope resigned telling us that really the most tantalizing aspects of our investigation didn't have anything to do with the supernatural side of it. It was the side that where we were dealing with the Vatty Lakes. And All right, I'm going to stop the video here and I'm going to put the link below. You will have it, but I just wanted to uh, address this issue about the new Pope coming in, the last Pope, Peter the Roman, and disclosure of extraterrestrial presence. Now, believe me, when the last pope comes in, if uh, he does follow the prophecy of uh, Saint Malachi, and he is the last pope that takes the uh, flock, feeds the flock into tribulation, uh, and the cities on seven hills will be destroyed, and the dreadful judge will judge his people. We're looking here what I truly believe to be when this happens, the rapture of the church should take place. And remember, they've got that telescope at the Vatican, and it's called Lucifer. And they're going to have to explain where did all these people go, and they will pull off a fake alien invasion and say these people were abducted. I don't know if that's going to happen, but um, that's where I'm going with this. Leave me comments, everyone, and the links will be below.